Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Merci, Dan. Hi, Annie. It's well, the recording is starting already, but I just wanted to uh, to welcome you out of the coffee room. There we go. <laughs> David, just so you know, I resent the invitation. I sent you the list and I am going to stay in the room, but turn off the sound and go back to bed. Bye. Yes. No, I was. It's good that you said that. I was about to resend the invitation. <laughs> just dead. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Bye Don. <laughs> Bye, Don. Hi, David. Good morning. I'm sorry, I couldn't unmute. I was no, having... no, that's fine. And yeah. uh, we're recording already. Yes. I'm gonna start letting people in. Sure. Get the brains dirty. Welcome, everyone. We'll be starting the meeting at about eight thirty-three or something like that. We'll give you enough time for people to join us. I know there's some people. Who, um, I'll say it again. We'll start the meeting a couple of minutes after 8.30 to give ample time for people to join us. Uh, I, If you have a phone number, please um, correct your name and just uh, take the number out and just put your name instead. And the... Um, um, a group you're affiliated with, it's not a legislator. Good morning. This is Colette Griffin, and I joined by phone. Uh, okay, you're Colette Griffin, and who are you affiliate, affiliated with? Sorry. Yes, well, I'm uh, both on the board of Connecticut Votes for Animals, and that I'm also a um, court advocate. CVA, okay. And good, good morning to everybody. Good morning. If you're a rep, please change your name to, uh, just add the word rep in front of your name. I'm gonna mute my phone so I don't get alerts. Between uh, since I have COVID, it's it's not the best when several tools are working at the same time and creating alerts. <laughs> and I will ask everybody to bear with me as I do have COVID.
Hopefully, I, I won't get the brain fog I got last time. <laughs> Hope not. Yeah, I think I think I was five days inside with COVID when I started having brain fog. I'm only at day three, so. Mm -hmm. Zach. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Zach. Morning, everybody. Once again, if you're a representative, please rename yourself and put the word rep in front of your name, if that's okay. And if you're affiliated with any organization like HSUS, take example of our great Annie Hornish. She put the Humane Society of the US after her name. Uh, that always help. Um, I put CVA. Yep, I see James put CVA. Anne, hello, Anne Gadua from Sierra Club. Cool. Actually, we're busier than I thought we would be. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening at the Capitol and for legislators. Uh, I know our, my own co-chair will be coming in late. Uh, she has a, K, a CABE meeting, uh, but she'll try to be on as of 8.45. Again, if you're a rep and you just came in, please put the word rep in front of your name so we know you're a rep. Um, I probably know, but it's good for the whole room. We run these, uh, these animal advocacy caucus pretty openly uh, where everybody has the same role in the meeting. Uh, we do have the pressure that some reps might have to run for other events. So uh, that is the one reason for which we might give priority to uh, legislators to comment or um, bring up any 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 item uh, to our caucus. Okay. Okay. Christine Dorchak and Tracy Mara are coming in. Matt Mara, Christine Dorchak with Great UK. Um, uh, again, Christine, for example, uh, Christine Dorchak, you're with Gray 2K. If you don't mind changing your name and just put a dash and add Gray 2K. If you're a rep, just put the word rep in front of your name. I really appreciate to see actually that many legislators this morning because uh, I know that it's a busy time for legislators at this point, and I'm a little bit, we're a bit late organizing this caucus. Bear with me if my voice sounds a little raunchy. I do have COVID. I'm not feeling great. Uh, but I will try to run this meeting smoothly and 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 uh, as smoothly as possible. Uh, so I'll probably start, I'll start the meeting now. I might make uh, someone, uh, my co, uh, let me see. And Ann Hughes, Rep Ann Hughes, would you be okay if I made you co-host? I need another co-host just in case if I go down. <laughs> I won't go down, but and I can't hear you, yes. but I yes, yes. Okay. Go ahead. make you co-host. Thank you. And um and then we'll start the meeting. Um yeah, I'm chasing names in the list now. Oh. Rhett and Michelle, get yourself some tea and feel better. Yep. <laughs> Good yeah. to see you. <laughs> Uh, for some reason, I can't. Yep, I couldn't make it, and I can't make you co-host. That would only be uh, done when she's back, back to bed. All right, so we'll start the meeting. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us on this first uh, pre or this pre-session uh, caucus. Session is starting in early February. I believe it's February 7th. And anyone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, um, we have had always big agendas in this caucus. And we've also noticed that some of our priority bills don't even get much of a, of a chance to go through the system. Uh, so this year, we're going to try and not that we don't want to support as many bills. We probably always want to support way more bills than we uh, than we support as priority bills. 
uh, but being a short session and I apparently the shortest session in decades, uh, we're extremely limited and the limits are really um, upon the chairs and with public hearing. Uh, any bill that a chair takes on to public hearing will bring a certain amount of uh, public and experts to come and, and discuss. And uh, as some of you know, the chairs count their minutes on, on, on how many bills they're gonna bring in to caucus uh, and to a public hearing. Again, I apologize. Um, if you didn't hear it, I have uh, COVID, so my brain is not uh, fully and entirely functional. It usually isn't anyway, but uh, this is humor, uh, but uh, we can continue. Um, so the bills of interest this, this year that we're sort of prioritizing and I've spoken with the chair of environment also to know what are the chances. And so that we are actually coordinated or more coordinated than we usually are. And we definitely are talking about rodenticides in environment this year. Uh, we have high hopes that near the end of session, we'll have the proper, proper version of the bill. Um, again, that's what we will have to do as members of this caucus is try and support the bill to be whole by the end of session. Uh, so throughout the entire process, we need to put pressure on my colleagues in environment, as well as the good chairs, uh, so that this bill is effective. Again, last year, rodenticides ended up being some language about uh, banning people from using it when the real problem is the experts using it. We now know um, that there are alternative products that are much safer to the environment. So the rodenticides bill... And we had Christine Cummings do some presentations last year. She did a lot of work and outreach. We thank her for that. And um, there will be uh, full supports on this bill. We're looking at a wildlife trafficking bill that would include several parts. I can't really be precise yet as to one of the parts. I can say that we would put uh, the um, uh, the uh, fish, uh, the uh, shark fin um, uh, sales ban um, in it. Um, because that passed the, the House with a large majority in 2019. The problem was really in the Senate. People who had been opposing this bill, there's only two, uh, they are no longer in the Senate. So we're thinking that this should be a no-brainer, but again, nothing is a no-brainer uh, at the Capitol. Uh, we always have to look at every detail and who might be against it now, or that might be new or not. Um and a part of it would be addressing um, current data that is being gathered from the state of Connecticut uh, that will be used as a backup for another section. We have a presser organized for the 24th of January where we will release important information about the state of Connecticut and uh, something having to do with interstate law and wildlife trafficking. And so we want to bring this uh upon uh, the public and the legislature on the 24th of January, when everything has been properly gathered and organized. Um, so that's for the wildlife trafficking bill. We are also very, uh, pretty confident that a Greyhound bill will be coming back out, but we need to also talk with our chair, good chair, uh, uh, D'Agostino of General Law, to make sure that we are bringing it back this year. So I ask for the members of the caucus to support also um, uh, this effort. Again, I remind everyone that we're one of the last two or three states in the US, or la last two states at this point in the US that hasn't been Graham racing. So I think it's really about time. And I'll invite Christine Dorchak to touch maybe a couple of words if you want to, Christine. I mean, you've worked a lot on, on this on this uh, legislature and. It's been attempted every year. If you want to make any comments, now is the time. I'll ask to Thank you so much. I just I would just say that there's only one state with two dog tracks, and it's West Virginia. So um the trend has been to ban dog racing, and Connecticut has yet to do that. It it authorized dog racing back in the 70s. And what we're trying to do is simply correct the law and remove the authorization for dog racing so it never comes back. Thanks for having me today. Thank you, Christine. And thank you for everyone. I'm not prioritizing personally uh, one issue. I want to make sure all the advocates understand that it's not about prioritizing one issue over another. It's looking at, in this short session, 
what could we be hopeful at passing? And Kate O'Connell is here and she's like an encyclopedia of everything we do every session. And thank you for that, Kate, uh, gathering all the information about all the bills about animals, pro against animals, everything. And um, I think uh, Kate is well placed to know also that <laughs> we don't we don't pass a ton of bills every year and that we might want to be more focused and more united on what is being passed along with the leadership of environment, which could help in the future develop you know, more chances for other bills to come out as well. So we need to uh, see how we can work better with uh, leadership of environment. Um, I see, Anne, you raise your hand. Maybe you haven't gotten to this, David, but I was wondering uh, on the heels of the success of the lights out bill to, for migratory birds, can we expand that? Is that uh, in the hopper as a, as a, as a, you know, possibility? So I received that email as well, and I'm all, all behind it and supportive. As a legislator, I'll support every animal bill. Uh, there's no, no question about it in, in protected animals. The key is, has the committees of cognizance, the leaderships, been uh, communicated with? If the chair is very limited and say nobody has uh, reached out to the chair on those on those issues, I invite the advocates all who are today on the call and all those who will be listening or watching this the, the video of this call, um, you want to reach out ASAP to the chairs of committees. Uh, this is a short session, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of brief you about it again, uh, just in case you don't know. Short session, the bills that are being raised are raised by the, like, are, are they're basically committee bills. You'd have to basically go on ourselves. We have to quote unquote lobby, just like you guys, to our chairs to raise certain specific bills in short session. It's not like I can, I can introduce a bill or Anne can introduce a bill and they get a whole bunch of co-introducers. And then we go back to the committee in a couple of weeks and ask the committee to raise the bill. It's not the same process. It's a bit more limiting. And uh, the chairs have a very short timeline in front of them, which, um, uh, probably causes stress uh, and anxiety uh, facing everybody. Everybody's asking all the chairs for all the bills, right? So, uh, Nan, I, see, I recognize you on the call. Nan's in a risen cell. I do want to ban legal traps. Um, but again, um, did you speak with the Chair Gresco? Uh, when I spoke to him, it was very limited as to what will be considered to go through environment. Um, and I'm not sure of any other committee of cognizance on this one. Um, and, and for, I, you know, it's a very difficult bill to pass. I am all in favor of, but being very difficult in a long session makes it a lot of efforts in a short session for a very, very uh, high chance that it does not move forward, even maybe even to a public hearing. Um, so I am, I am in favor of it, 500%, I'm there. And as a legislator on my own, I'm, I'm happy to support the bill, but will the committee raise it as a bill? Will the chairs raise it as a committee bill? I don't know. And I did not hear, I didn't really have the comments from environment that this was considered. Um, we can always go back and uh, and question the chair. And this is why, again, I say this is a pre-session caucus. We might have a caucus very short within the beginning of session, shortly within the beginning of session. So if there's any updates, at least we can bring them back quickly to this meeting, to this caucus, uh, and to the advocates. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, boy. I need to mute myself for a second. While you're coughing, David, um, it might not... Um meet the requirements of being a budget oriented adjustment that's why the chairs might reject it but it's still worth trying because it was very successful and um you know it, it we're ripe for for expanding it so what we can do is we can still take a note as several bills i know there's also the idea of looking at uh um something about acos um there are other things right now on this meeting. I wanted to focus on what what we know might have better chances of going through. Um, of course, I would introduce uh, fifty bills for animals anytime. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but I think we really need to figure out how to work closely. Also, our our main priority bills the last couple of years was the um, traveling, the ban on traveling shows with animals, exotic animals. And last year, it was defeated in the Environment Committee <laughs> uh, by pressure from the Mystic Aquarium, which wasn't touched at all by the bill. The language did not do anything to this aquarium. And uh, for them to, uh, I think the reason why they got involved on this was because they are they are accreditations. And those groups like AZA and ZAA and some of those groups are really antagonistic to animal protection bills. Uh, they're more about the entertainment, protecting the entertainment for people and et cetera. So they might have in other state affiliates that actually do travel, have traveling shows, it's possible, and they're trying to protect them. Uh, but in, the, in our state, in Connecticut, that bill had zero things to do with Mystic Aquarium. So I really did not appreciate their, their input and uh, the way that it came through into the Environment Committee. And hopefully um, in long session next year, we can bring back this bill because it needs to be passed. Um, um, we need to ban uh, this, this practice. We have bad players within our own state. We have animals that have died from stress that uh, were housed in our state. And I, I think it's important that uh, it is ended. It's cruelty. We're allowing cruelty. And uh, I was upset that the Environment Committee did not uh, um, did, uh, stopped at it uh, based on language when the language had nothing to do again with Mystic Aquarium. So I'm, I'm, I'm not looking forward for a repeat to this experience. Uh, and hopefully uh, next year we won't have a repeat of that experience. Um, and then I want to leave it up to legislators first if they wanted to bring in um, any uh, uh, legislative effort uh, that would be of cognizance for our caucus. Um, maybe before I do, I'll make one more comment. Some of the members of our caucus, it's possible, I'm not going to say it is, but it's possible that some members of our caucus did support some hunting efforts uh, last year. I want to say this is not the caucus that supports hunting efforts. As a matter of fact, we're here to uh, here to protect wildlife and pets and all animals. And uh, 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 really hunting is, is proved to be only something of entertainment, uh, not really of any, uh, I don't, I personally do not believe that it has anything to do with, um, uh, with uh, uh, management uh, or environmental management. Um, there's enough peer reviewed studies out there that uh, debunk uh, this sort of approach. So I just wanted to say that uh, if you're part of this caucus, you know, just rethink your position or at least come to me and, and my co-chair and let's talk about your positions on certain things where we might be in, in disagreement because we need to be unified in our efforts uh, to defeat uh, um, attacks on animals. <laughs> All right, legislators, anybody wants to comment or bring in other legislative efforts that we should discuss? And again, by the way, Nan, or, or anybody else. We're not dismissing other bills. We're just saying we don't have the power to raise a bill. And so we need the chairs of the committees again to be reached out to. And if they agree, then we can then we can shift some of our focus on those bills that would be supported by the chairs. A absolutely. We'll be happy to do so. Rep Kathy Kennedy, good morning. Good morning, Rep Michelle, and good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year and all that good kind of stuff. So what I have for the um, committee probably won't happen in short session, but I would like to see stronger enforcement for people, individuals that are are not convicted yet, but um, how do I want to say this? Uh, that. <laughs> you, we've all seen, there's been terrible things happening. There's a Wilton man that shot a dog. I'm very concerned on what he is going to get. He, he was charged. But what will the, um, I, I can't think of the word. What's he going to get for time? Animal cruelty charges, right? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay, it's like brain freeze and not working this early in the morning. I'm the one <laughs> with anyway, COVID. I, it, it's, we've all seen it a lot, but um, also we've also seen a rise in um, domestic violence and domestic violence and attacks on animals are seeming to go hand in hand. And of course, we want to protect anyone involved in a domestic violence situation, but it seems like the prosecutors or whomever, they work a deal out. And I, 
I want people to be safe, but we're not protecting our animals in the long run because we we um ah, <laughs> we dumb down those charges. Uh, that's not the right word, but and then they they're not sticking. I mean, how can you beat an animal to death? And that happened in Milford, and and not get extra charges on that. It's 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 a frustration for me. I, I'm just uh. I think I'm just whining, but it's just very upsetting. When I saw about the dog in Wilton, the German Shepherd, I love German Shepherds, but um, we just we just need to find a way in the long session. So I just want to put on everyone's radar. You know, I, I keep going to court to watch and to see how these play out. And it's like, I, I'm not being effective, I'm sure, but there's got to be another way we can be effective with when people are charged with these the penalties just aren't there and how do we strengthen those so just not I can, sure down the road and yeah. i did not articulate that well at all i apologize but i'm almost Kathy, away. this is a friendly <laughs> caucus you're fine i think oh, that okay. we can open actually this to anyone who wants to participate on this particular topic uh if you have any um uh, knowledge or cognizance on this i i agree with you uh rep kennedy uh and i think you bring a valid a, a valid comment about the link to violence to humans or dcf for example we've all we, i think we all heard about the case where um uh, dcf busted a house where they had calls in the past for duag about animal cruelty and they were not really uh, adequately taken care of and uh it was dcf who busted it and found the animal cruelty charges and actually a bunch of animals had to be rescued out of that case and Sorry. then we also Left we'll people the in from the um, waiting room. Oh, okay. And certainly we also could have a case in Bridgeport, which I lost. I haven't really seen it. Um, I could actually watch heart surgery before I could watch what that woman did when she picked that dog up by his, I think, tail. It could have been his head and beat him. So, you know, it's stuff like that that just really get under my skin. I apologize if I interrupted someone. Yeah, and uh, I'm bringing Annie. I, I know I bring Annie Hornish a lot, but uh, <laughs> I'll say that um, typically, animal cruelty charges are dismissed uh, I, 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 in our state. And Kate, oh, I think, yeah. is also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, good oh. morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? This is Colette Griffin. I, I don't have access to uh, seeing who's speaking. Um, <clears throat> but Go ahead, can yeah. I say, a, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and I'm sorry you have COVID. I've been battling RSV, so I my sympathies are with you. Um, so one avenue that I really hope one day we can address, and it's sort of bringing up something new, but education of the judicial system, uh, meaning the judges and the prosecutors. And, uh, you know, I've worked together with UConn Law School. Um, we've done presentations and invited all of the judges on the link of violence. Um, but I really feel that without giving the proper um, background and knowledge of why it's so important if they're not going to care about the individual animals, the effects it has overall on the children, on the women, on whoever's being um, faced with that violence, um, certainly we have to recognize that this link is there. And I just always hoped that utilizing that, we would be able to be effective in protecting the animals that I absolutely agree. We see it day in, day out. I started my career working with battered women and have always been involved with animals. Um, so that just, a, just a food for thought um, that that would be something I would be tremendously interested in trying to pursue um, a, a class or a course for judges and prosecutors. All right. Well, that sounds that sounds um, very interesting, Colette. Uh, certainly, something that we should uh, we should talk about more. I I agree, because that would address part of the problem for sure. Um, yeah, and I know. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Annie. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just a comment for those who may not know um, the the addressing your concern, Representative Kennedy. Um, about eighty percent, roughly, of the cases. Uh, are dismissed or nollied of animal cruelty. And that's a horrifying statistic considering all we know about the link. Um, you know, even if even if someone doesn't care about animals, uh, it has a human impact as well. But it's it's pretty, it's it's improving slightly due to the great efforts of the Yukon Law Court Advocate Program. 
but we still have a long way to go. Yep. Thank you. I just uh, uh, let some more people in. Uh, I see a Kathleen. I don't see your last name or any affiliation. Would you please um, rename yourself so that we know who you're affiliated with, if that's okay. Thank you very much. Um, and if you're just a general member of the public, then just your both first name and last name will do. Um, anybody else? Any other legislators trying wanting to bring some other issue? And and Rep Kennedy, like I I think that's something that needs to be worked on, and pretty urgently. I'm not sure we, it, as you said, would achieve anything this year, but we should start working on this this year, and and explore all kinds of different ways of addressing uh, animal cruelty statutes. I think there's been efforts to also elevate uh, the uh, um, uh, the penalties, and so there's there's a lot of things I think that we can discuss around that that subject. And, and I don't want to dwell on it, um, Rep. Michelle, but um, Attorney um, Griffin point stated it well when she said that we really need to have better conversation with our judges and and whatnot, so they have a better understanding. And I just sent her a message in chat um, if she, we could get together and just start working. So it's going to take a lot of work. It's not going to be something. That's why it has to be a long session. But yep. so I just sent her a note. So thank you so well, maybe much. Maybe we can we can create a working group from the Sounds yeah. great. Why yep. don't we create a working group from from the caucus? And so what we should do yep. is uh I'll just, uh, just not... bear, bear with me, Attorney Griffin. Uh, I'll just finish yep. this sentence. Yep. Uh, yep. that um we can start a working group so legislators and Rep Kennedy Usually we'll try to make it uh, bipartisan, like the caucuses, and and maybe we, we we can discuss offline. And anyone who is a legislator on the call now, and you're interested in joining uh, Rep Kennedy on this on this uh, working group, then please uh, let me know. Uh, let me and Nicole know by email uh, after the meeting, and then uh, we'll start building up a group on 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 this. And uh, I'll I'll send it back to. We have more members. A lot of members could not make it because they have conflicting schedule today. So, um, all right. I see. Thank you very much, Rep. Kennedy, for this. And um, I just, I, if I oh, could yes. just add one thing, I'm so sorry. I don't because I'm only on phone. I don't have the chat room. You are welcome to reach out to me on my phone number. You can text me. Um, my email is c griffin at ct work w r o r k comp c o m p dot com however it's easiest for you to reach out to me i'm totally happy and thrilled to um you know try to move that ball forward thank you attorney griffin uh, i'll have one of your colleagues from cva just type up your email in the chat if possible Perfect. and that would be helpful Excellent. uh thank you uh rep hughes I'll let um, Andre go first because I already talked and then I'll well, go you, you had your hand first hand. It's all right. Oh, uh, I was just going to say um, this might be an adjacent thing that the Animal Advocacy Caucus could support. But, um, you know, restricting the, the worst pesticides because they're so toxic for the environment, for animals and humans, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know there's there's a lot of folks uh, working on that, especially with the pollinator pathways. And I just don't know where that stands, but I would love to see that move forward again. And maybe this caucus could support that. Yep, I, I yep, Rep. Hughes, I'm 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 with you on this. Uh, the um, I spoke to uh, pollinator pathway uh, people again. I think it depends on the environment committee uh, leadership um, and. Uh, I know that they're focusing on rodenticides. I am not sure that Unix and other non-organic uh, pesticides are included in the discussion at this point for this year. Uh, but you definitely have my my firm support on any of those. I even attempted my own uh, bills right on this, uh, and I think that members of the uh, uh, Animal Advocacy Caucus should probably also be uh, normally in favor. Uh, there's always comes the questions. Do big agriculture suffer from not using uh, non-organic pesticides? And I'll tell you one thing is the city of Stanford banned all non-organic pesticides and they put suggestions for uh, alternatives. It just takes a little bit of time to reach a level. Like if you're going to change a soil from, uh, from uh, uh, using non-organic pesticides to 
uh, bringing it back to health, uh, it's going to take a couple of years. So obviously, it's a big discussions and then sport fields as well, and et cetera. Uh, again, I've formulated, I just sent to the whole legislature something about turf fields, how they're being rolled up instead of being recycled and stored on farmlands in the Midwest. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just uh, that I, I find turf fields an utter ridiculous idea, uh, but it's okay. Uh, but thank you. And yes, again, the caucus, I think, is in full agreement on a lot of efforts. It's just what can we pass this year and what are the chairs ready to push forward? It's difficult. Rep Baumgartner, how are you today? Good morning, sir. Yeah, it's good morning, and I uh, hope you feel better. Um, COVID's no fun. Um, uh, uh, CAFO, so Concentrated Animal Feed Operations. Um, you know, very curious as to kind of how many, if there are any in Connecticut. I've been doing a lot of reading on it and um, regarding the public health implications in particular of, um, you know, uh, concentrated animal feeding operations cited, especially near uh, watersheds and, um, you know, certainly the impact to our local ecosystem um, and our, our biodiversity. Um, and, um, and most importantly, you know, the treatment of the animals within those facilities. Um, you know, you I've read about horror stories in, in some of the um, Midwest communities that have um, probably more uh, uh, of these facilities than actual neighborhoods. Um, and I, I know Connecticut, we uh, really, by definition, only have one factory farm, um, a, um, an egg farm uh, here out in eastern Connecticut, but uh, certainly would not like to see uh, any more in, in the future, especially when uh, now, especially a new generation of farmers are uh, focusing more heavily on re uh, regenerative practices and sustainable and resilient practices, um, which I think is actually better for uh, the um, you know, the economic outlook of agriculture in our state anyway. Um, so just wanted to flag that if that's anything that, um, sh you know, should be of concern, if we should study more and learn about, but that that's something I'm um, interested in. So I, I very much appreciate you raising that point, Rep. Bum Garner, because there is a discussion right now where we did introduce a bill about the egg farm. And Annie, you can unmute, I mean, unmute yourself if you want to join in, because I know this is a subject we've talked about. Uh, the egg farm had a, a fire and uh, a lot of the chickens died in their cages, not having a chance to go anywhere. Uh, and we've been fighting for cage free. Um, the egg farm is saying that uh, they're putting millions of dollars in making their facility egg, uh, cage free. Um, and last year, the bill was taken out or just died un under the assumption and the word from the chairs of environment that we would all be invited to visit the facility and see their progress in uncaging chicken. I have not been invited. I believe there was an invitation out there. I've heard nothing about it. I've seen nothing about it uh, since that bill was being discussed. And uh, I'm certainly interested in uh, reaching back out to environment leadership and asking about uh, those facilities. Um, uh, of course, um, you you did mention. So, was there a part of what you mentioned in regards to the feed itself? Because I know you mentioned the treatment of animals in those facilities and etc. So, cage free is definitely something that we've been pushing and we want done. Um, and it's not the first fire that company has had. That's the second time. And if if uh, just thinking of sentient uh, or, or animals stuck in cages while there's a fire, just I I consider that uh, of a high level of cruelty um, and, and lack of safety standards uh, and protocols. Um, so that's something to follow up with our own chairs because you're in an environment with me. Uh, maybe both you and I can reach out to uh, our chair and and see and 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 see what what has been. We were supposed to look at it in the meantime, and if there was no progress for this year, then this year we would have a bill. That was kind of the word we were given. So um, I don't want to hold the chair necessarily to their full word because sometimes things happen, happen and change uh, and change the um, everything revolving around it. But uh, it's certainly a, a subject to bring up. Annie, sorry. Um, yeah, and and um, th thank you for those words, Representative Michelle. Um, uh, in addition to the fire, there's periodically there's catastrophes that occur at Hillendale. They've there's been 
roof collapses due to snow loads in the past and they typically just mass euthanize or just let them clean them up, let them die. There's, there's little to no individualized veterinary care. So we really want to move towards um, not using cages and um, frankly, reducing consumption. Um, also supporting our small local farmers in the, in the process. Um, and, also, and Andy, I would note, and I, I'm just reading a little bit more about the fire here. And it appears that even, you know, the, a lot of the egg farms out here in e Eastern Connecticut over, um, you know, when they started were small family farms. And over time, uh, there's been a consolidation and actually more of a kind of a, a big, you know, a, a sort of a monopoly, so to speak, on, on um, uh, the egg, so to speak. So um, that that is of a concern, too, because I, you know, I'd love to support, you know, emerging farmers and, you know, our, our family farms. Um, and it, it's it's sad to see that many family farms, you know, not just egg farms, but um, they're they're starting to shutter. And, and you obviously don't want to see kind of big, big ag come in and, and take them over, of course. Right. Um, and um, another issue we have, um, we've had several years in a row now where uh, the Department of Agriculture has proposed large scale rabbit farming, which is another form of factory farming. Um, and that's something we've been able to defeat um, thanks to all, all of your efforts, our efforts on, on this call. But we have to make stay vigilant on that to not expand uh, farming. It's a move backwards, frankly. And, and there's uh, concerns of spread of a certain rabbit uh, viral disease as well. And, and having, you know, expanding um, farming uh, of rabbits to large scale operations would contribute to a worsening of that um, disease threat as well. No, th thank you both. I mean, personally, I, I yeah, I, I, I'm all for expanding uh, land-based farms. <laughs> Sorry, that's side comments from my side. Uh, Rep, the great Rep Mara from uh, the neighboring uh, city of Norwalk. Good morning. Hey there. Um, I just wanted to go back to your discussion about banning the um, the uh, pesticides in um, Stanford because Norwalk banned um, herbicides, but there's still an issue with like it's it's really only whatever is a city property. Is that what you're finding? Because I, I think there's um, like Eversource can still come in and use the herbicides on all of the um, all of Metro North, all of the state property. Yeah. Uh, and it's even yeah. so that I'm understanding. So do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, Stanford banned uh, all non-organic pesticides and all classifications of pesticides, herbicides, romanticides, whatever is non-organic is banned from use on indeed city property. Right. So we're so we're still stuck with the idea that, you know, the state can still right. come in, you know, state property is you know, fairly um, large, especially in our neck of the woods where you've got Metro North and everything. So I'm all for encouraging that we do this on the state level. We can. There are even even just some more transparency on it, because that's that's what we were finding with other sources that they kind of come in and, and you know, check the box for you for the herbicides that go on things. So um, I guess I would, I would, I, as long as we have transparency, as long as people know kind of what they're getting themselves into, I would like to see it, you know, avoided on wetlands. I would like to see it avoided on um, flooded areas, which again, in our neck of the woods is, you know, most of the towns. Um, anyway, just a, just a thought when we look forward. I mean, that's, that's partially environment, but, um, you know, partially animal. As well. Again, the great win I think that could happen this year with rodenticides is that we have alternatives that are safe, that literally yeah. do what they're being used for and not have all this damage and cruelty all around it. Yeah. Um, so um, we certainly should lead as an example. The state should start with its own its own lands. And um, yeah, I and all with that, uh, at least st start with educating the public and all the entire legislature about it is good. Yep. Um, anything else? Uh, Red Bumgarner, your hand is still up. Is it from earlier? I guess so. Um, all right. And then there's still another uh, topic I brought in last year and then 
I unfortunately did not follow up. Um, it was about our logo. Uh, we had the idea of maybe using the schools and the kids to design the logo for the uh, Animal Advocacy Caucus, but with a certain criteria that we would put and give the, the kids. Um, I was trying to find out if anybody part of the caucus would like to take the lead on this effort and work with the Department of Education possibly, or maybe we just go to artists, but I think there's something to gain at going to uh, high school kids to design our logo, bring attention that there is a caucus to defend um, uh, animal advocacy or animal rights. Uh, so if anybody want, has any idea there, please go ahead and give some input. If not, I will keep it in the back of the drawer and continue to think about it. And we'll probably talk about it in the next meeting again. I have to figure out a way that's fun and uh, or maybe go with the um, kid governor. Uh, I was talking with Annie and she suggests maybe the kid governor would be a, a great um, a great um, a great way to get into this. Um, and that's it. Um, all right. So uh, we have a press on the 24th. I ask and we will send another email that as many members of the caucus that could be present that day, please come. It's on the 24th and I'm trying to figure out the time. I believe it's at, Annie, is it at 11 or 10? 11? Yeah, it's in coordination with the Humane Society of the United States. Uh, 11 a.m. room 1B. Max? You have a nice stuff. I have my uh, our kitten, uh, rescue kitten, who's in my piles of paperwork. <laughs> I can see everything just about to fall. Um, come on, Max. Want to say hi to the car? Come. Oh, she's just bowing away. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so 24th. And then for the next meeting, I don't have a date yet, but it should be within the first two weeks of session, I would say. Um, so we might have updates. Um, I see Rep Baumgartner has his hand up again, I believe. Um, no, okay. Uh, okay, anybody else, anything uh, that they want to add? Anyone going once? <laughs> Anyone going twice? <laughs> Anyone going three times? Well, I think we managed to have a, a short first meeting, pre-session. It was 40, uh, less than 45 minutes. I think we do good in this caucus. It's a friendly caucus. Uh, everybody is just, it's an open conversation with everyone. We welcome everyone every time. Uh, let your friends, uh, advocates know, and let your friend uh, legislators know uh, that everybody's welcome here. Obviously, with uh, just as long as the uh, cognizance is uh, of respect to their own uh, uh, views. Thank you very much, everyone. Don, I need you to re-emerge and uh, and uh, stop the recording and stop the meeting <laughs> if Don is around. Everyone, you have a wonderful day, a wonderful rest of the week and weekend, and we will see you soon in the beginning of session. Feel better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will rest now because it's been more than a day of just nonstop meetings. Uh, and uh, yesterday night, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was like with high fever last night. I was still in a meeting. I was like, I got to go. I'm done. So Feel better. Yeah, take care. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Merci. Merci. <laughs> Au revoir. A bientôt. Au revoir. Bientôt. <laughs> <laughs>
Like all kinds of windows just open up. But Linda, if you hear me uh, and if you want to make any comments, you're welcome to.